You're listening to The Arms Room on the Vets on Media Network. All right, you're on the arms room with Glenn and John, and we are getting this down. Good job, buddy. Good job, Mason. Great. Round of applause for Mason. This Congratulations! Morning, everyone. Congratulations! No sound effects though. Now that Adam's not at the board anymore, we don't. Get well, he only effects. ever did that like once, anyway. I know. He told us he had these cool sound effects. He's like, I'm going to start using these all the time. He did it. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Crawl, walk, run. Right, we're in the crawl phase. All right, we're in the crawl phase. So, uh, how was your weekend, there, John? It was actually a pretty good weekend. I uh, no, that's not true. My wife had drill again. Mm. <laughs> so, Terrible. but you know, it was good. Red wire's blowing up. We keep getting orders for stuff. So, well, that's good. Yeah. How about you there? Oh, Adam doesn't have a damn microphone anymore. That's all right. He's got a big boy voice. All right, Mason. How was your weekend? Your I had a weekend of saving the world, so it wasn't too bad. <sighs> Just a little drill weekend. No big deal. He said he had a drill weekend yeah. and he saved the world. Yeah. One weekend a month. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> One weekend a month, two weeks a year. No, it was typical which, drill stuff. All right. You know. Which, by the way, the one weekend a month, two weeks uh, in the summer hasn't, is a load of shit. <laughs> yep. By hasn't the way, worked, hasn't worked so well. I've never done that in my entire career. Decade. I spent my first three years in the National Guard not at home. Just, just putting that out there. That's yep. About right. <laughs> That's about right. Uh, so I had an interesting weekend. Took uh, took my daughter's camping. That was fun. Ooh. Yeah, I had a weekend with no training, which is odd. Cool, but kind sucks at the same time. Like, what, what, what's going what, on? What am I supposed to do with you what people? What am I supposed to do with this weekend time? So, uh, yeah, I took the, took the girls camping, and then I uh, – what else did I do? Uh, oh, I remember what I did. It was a lot of fun. Um, after a day of soccer games with the, with the kiddos and mm. the communist sport of soccer, uh, hung out with, uh, Matt and his girlfriend. Oh, nice. Yeah. They came up and, and, uh, did some shooting with me and my family and had a good time and it was all kinds of fun. That's fantastic. It was fantastic. And then yesterday I did not a lot. I took a nap yesterday. Mm, I pretty much hate you. How awesome wow. is that? Yeah. I don't think I like you right now. That's all right. The oldest junior me got up at was it Saturday morning. He's like, it's 5 a.m. It's time to get up. Come on, Dad. Sun's up. Time to get up. Sun's up. No, it's not. Yes. Sun's up. Sun's up. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. No, he comes in and he's like, Dad, sun's up. I'm like, best, time to get out of bed, That's the best buddy. alarm ever, dude. I'm like, Ugh. It's horrible. So I want to talk about two really cool things before we get going. Okay. The first really this. cool thing is this badass freaking shirt. Those are pretty sweet shirts. You got to stand up so everybody can see the back, though. So stand up and turn around. Hold on. I'm getting there. <laughs> this going be Christmas. You suck at being Vanna. I'm not. Yeah, I am. Just because I'm, you know, I'm used to being being the pusher, dude. And used to being Pat Sajak. All right. So we got these new shirts for the arms room. Boom. Big arms room logo on the front. The back. There we go. Our don't new, don't our choke new yourself. Right there. You gotta Nobody crouch. cares. You got to crouch a little bit. Okay. Crouch. Oh, I got to crouch a little there bit? Get, there you go. Yeah, nobody cares. Down? Work harder. <laughs> yep. All right. <clears throat> so front, big arms room logo, the back, nobody cares. Work harder. Yeah, that's like our new motto. <clears throat> I love it. Speaking so, of which, I'm sorry to interrupt you go, before go, we go, go further. Ahead. Go ahead. Um, we always talk about motivation and fitness and all these other things. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to watch the videos and hear stories about people. Mm -hmm. I met a guy in a wheelchair this weekend that yeah. did the baton death march. And he asked me to hand him bread loaf pans off the top shelf at a Walmart because he was in a wheelchair and he obviously couldn't reach them. And I look down and I see a shirt and I'm like, you did the, the, the baton? And he's like, yeah, man. I was like, oh, I kind of feel fat and useless <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, sorry. Total, right. total side note. Nobody cares. Work harder. That's all right. That's all right. So, uh, yeah, these shirts are going to be, I'm going to, I got a couple cool pictures of them. I'm going to be posting them up to the uh, Arms Room Facebook page. Okay, and um, they're going to be for sale. We've got a whole order of them ready to rock and roll, 
in uh, your size, hopefully. Do they make mediums. Okay, not Mason size. You got kid size. But <laughs> <laughs> I need a youth large. Need a youth large. <laughs> So, Don't oversell yourself, buddy. It's more like a 5T now. Pal. A 5T. <laughs> Gotta give me something. So, yeah, I think my kids have some hand-me-down clothes. I'll like give a onesie. Them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get a arms arm room onesie. onesie. Dude, get me one of those. Dude, I totally need one now. Now I want an arms room onesie for my boys. Heck yeah, man. All right. So, uh, anyways, they'll be up on the arms room Facebook page, and you can always email us and ask them, ask us about them. Uh, just send us an email to info at independence training.com and we'll, we'll give you all the information about ordering a shirt they're very awesome and uh let's see what else oh i remember i watched robocop last night not the old one. Oh, the new one the new one it's been out for a while yeah but it takes me a while to get around to watching well, yeah. that kind of stuff and uh i gotta say i enjoyed the movie mm -hmm. but it brought up two really really good points the first point was how amazingly interested people are in trading liberty for safety. Yes. That was the first point that really stuck out to me for the entire movie. And it was like an in-your-face point. Like, it wasn't a subtle thing. They were pretty much saying, hey, idiots, quit <laughs> trading liberty for safety. Right. You know, because we know what Ben Franklin to say about that. And uh, then the other point that was really interesting was how terrifying the use of dro drones on American soil could be. Mm. You know? Um, you know, unmanned, no conscious, no conscience, I should say, uh, type of vehicles, robots, drones, whatever you want to call them in various capacities. And in RoboCop, they're like, you know, almost like T-1000 kind of Terminator looking things and uh, really interesting. And they made a couple interesting comparisons between like the robots and RoboCop when, you know, he got all hurt and got turned into a cyborg and everything. Uh, pretty good movie, actually. I enjoyed it. It was it was worth watching. You know, I mean, I'm I'm one of those guys. However, so I'm sure there's someone out there listening right now who's like, oh, but this happened and that happened, and I didn't like the fact that they didn't. You know, they left this loophole in the movie or whatever. I'm like, look, I don't really give a rat's ass because when I watch a movie, I'm using it to not think about reality. So mm. typically, the only thing I pick apart in movies are guns. And uh, there were so many realistic or uh, unrealistic, futuristic type weapons in the movie that it was kind of hard to pick them apart. But uh, it was a good movie. So if you haven't watched it, you ought to check it out. It's pretty good, uh, enjoyable, nothing too over the top. I watch it with my wife. She's not, you know, much of a crazy action movie person or whatever, but uh, she, you know, she, I think, enjoyed it. And so, yeah, good stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's add that to the list. Yeah. So, but those two interesting points are the things to really watch for. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, also watch the first two episodes of the new season of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. That that show is having a hard time keeping my interest, man. Well, I I watched the first like three or four episodes of the first season. Um, that was good though. When first it was actually was still a, when it was actually still a good show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But after here, like I don't watch it now regularly. I haven't seen any of the. I haven't seen anything beyond like halfway through season one. Sure. But everybody I know is they basically say that they basically turned it into like a grown-up dude uh soap opera mm -hmm. so i have no interest at all it's in kind of starting to get that way um they drag out <coughs> excuse me the last couple times like they they drug out one issue for basically two episodes that i thought could have been corrected in one episode but you know i think they're starting to run out of ideas after episode five now they're fighting cannibals and stuff so hmm. whatever anyways it was whatever it was late hmm. at night so i watched it uh, anyways, on to, okay. on to other All things. Right. Anything else happening in the in the crazy news? Uh, Ebola, watch out! It's not coming to your town near you. So just settle the hell down. Uh, I was I was actually reading an interesting article last night about um, I think like five people. The, not even five. It's people It's like the have panic. Died. The three in the U.S. Yeah, yeah three, 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 three confirmed cases in the U.S. And the panic about uh, Ebola spreads a lot faster than the actual virus itself. So settle and down. Here, here's the best part. And since the time that this show started, more people have died from car accidents, yeah. drug overdoses, and just in straight America. up murder in America than, Ebola. than have killed Ebola in the entire history of America. What do you think there, Adam? What'd you say? You're going to Dallas? Wednesday. Cool. Mm. We'll Make sure you lick all the, all the armrests yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure I get quarantined before I come back. Yeah, get quarantined yeah. before you come back. Eat some scabs. 
So, you know what? Here's the thing. Ebola is just another one of those things that you utilize to draw our attention away from the things that really matter. Because there are some things that really, really matter that are happening right now in the news. And this isn't a political show, so I won't get into it. But, you know, pay attention to the shit that actually matters and quit freaking out about stupid crap like Ebola and worry about things that are actually a real threat to your safety and liberty. And uh, quit freaking out about stupid stuff that's just used to divert your attention from the greater issue at hand. So pay attention, folks. Wagging the dog. Wagging, wagging the, dog. the dog. All right. So today. All right. Today. What we, are we talking about uh, today? We've got Bear Grylls on the show. That's just a joke. I would never have Bear Grylls on the show. That's not true. Bear Grylls, if you're listening, I would love to have you on the show. That would be fantastic. If Bear Grylls is listening, I would consider that a win. I would, too. <laughs> or if he sees us on YouTube, I would consider that a win. <laughs> He's probably sitting around like, I hate those bloody assholes. All right. Well, I'll so put hashtag Bear Grylls. Hashtag Bear Grylls. Thanks. Thanks, show. Mason. Perfect. He'll look at our show and be like, ah, those wankers are always making fun of me. So we're going to talk about survival kits today. All right. Um, realistic survival kits. And, and we'll get more into what we consider realistic survival mm-hmm. kits. But if you have any questions, you want to get involved in the show, you know, we, we never really have a lot of live call-ins, which always disappoints me. But, it's sad. But uh, our call-in number, if you <laughs> wanted to, is 602-399-7787. Don't can, be scared. And you can always jump on our Facebook page, The Arms Room on Facebook, and check us out there, leave a comment or a question, and we will certainly answer it. So let's talk about survival kits. First, I want to talk about what survival kits are not. All right. So here's what survival kits are not. Now, let me let me preface this with a little bit of quick, basic experience stuff. Um, I am uh, there's a there's a lot of different types of survival out there. There's a lot of different ideas of survival out there. Now, in my opinion, survival is something you do every single day. Every day I wake up, I'm surviving. And so, you know, my quote unquote survival kit kind of starts with all kinds of stuff like, you know, your everyday carry gear, which we've talked about on the show before, get home bags, which we've talked about on the show before. Like I brought my get home bag back in the in the studio today because um, I'm going to show my little survival kit in it. So, uh, you know, everyone's kind of got their own definition. Everyone's got their own idea. A lot of people think of survival. They think of like primitive living. They're going to run out. They're going to start a fire with sticks. They're going to be eating <laughs> bugs and shit. And that's like they're like, that's survival. And it's like, whoa, Haas. That's, That's extreme survival. It's, it's really more like primitive living. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, survival from an emergency standpoint. So we're not talking about everyday survival, but just from an emergency standpoint here. Um, survival really is something that thanks to, you know, stuff like technology and the modern age, we don't have to worry about rubbing sticks together. Now, I'm not saying that that's a useless skill. However, if you spent your time developing different types of skills, it'd probably be time better well spent. And so you'll see a lot of survival type stuff out there <clears throat> where they're focusing on just primitive living skills. And primitive living, primitive living skills are really cool and, and you should definitely practice them. I mean, I think they're a valuable thing to have in addition to modern survival techniques because the fact of the matter is you need to have the, the appropriate equipment with you. There's really not a whole lot of times where you can't have it. I don't care if you're a friggin' naval aviator and you get shot down behind enemy lines, you're still going to have some kind of any escape and evasion kit. You know, you've been through SEER school and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to understand some basic concepts of staying alive and you're going to have some tools at your disposal. So uh, aside from being thrown on that weird naked and afraid show, uh, which I I've, I've never actually watched an episode of, but it's just good. It's a good show. I kind of want to go on that show. Is it because you want to be naked? Or, I love being naked. Or afraid. And I, yeah, I love being naked and afraid. You know, it happens. Deleted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's how I spent most of my high school years, naked and afraid. So <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> so, so, anyways, um, and let you know, aside from finding yourself on that show. Right, right. Uh, or in that kind of really super duper duper extreme situation. Let's talk about modern survival. So here's what kits are not. Kits are not some prefabricated, pre-made piece of crap that you're going to buy at a store that was put together by a large corporation mm-hmm. who chose those, com- those components not based on their durability or their functionality, but rather based on the profit margin. In other words, how much money they could make off of that kit. 
what's their cost of goods being as low as possible versus what's the selling price and, and their profit margin there. That's what they're really looking for is can we produce this thing cheap enough to make money on it and sell it to people who can then also make money on it. That's really what they're after. Now, I'm not saying that every pre-made kit out there is junk. There's some decent ones from really, really good companies. But again, the majority of companies are putting kits together based on profit margin, not on functionality. So who are they selling these kits to? They're selling these kits to the same people. We've talked about first aid kits on the show. They're selling these kits to the same people that buy the traditional first aid kit from huge giant corporations. And those are the people who want to buy something to feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. They buy the little survival kit and they go, cool, I'm set. You know, I can I've, survive I've got everything I need. And they probably don't ever take it out of the package. In fact, I know they don't take it out of the package because I've seen some of these kits. Yeah, it's now, amazing how many people carry around magnesium fire starters. Yeah. But have never actually started a fire with a magnesium yeah. fire starter. Yeah. And, and the thing about a magnesium fire starter, I mean, just let's, let's just like talk about that for a second is everybody has them in their kits. Um, using one, you know, the flint and steel is a, is a great thing. I mean, that's how I start most of my fires. That's what I carry in all my kits. But the flint available on a magnesium fire starter it is not that good, and it's going to wear out really, really fast because it's incredibly small. And the magnesium itself, yeah, that's great. It, it's it's an, a nice addition um, to help you get something started, but there's much better, more reliable stuff that you can use that's going to help you get your fire started hotter and faster than a magnesium fire starter. And for the size and price of a magnesium fire starter, you can just buy a really good piece of flint and steel and call it a day. And if you've ever used like one of the Chinese made magnesium fire starters, mm -hmm. don't even bother. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not worth how much you pay for it. Just yeah. If you're out. buying one of the two or three dollar, well, what are you guys selling for at the store? Probably few bucks. Yeah, we got some. We have, we actually sell some really decent ones, you know, at the store, but we also have, you know, your just generic, like off mm -hmm. the shelf kind of $3.50 magnesium fire starters. And, uh, and yeah, so I mean, you're looking at stuff like that where there's just not quality components going into a lot of these kits. Uh, we're going to get kind of into the idea of kits here in a second, but what I want, what else I want to talk about as far as pre-made stuff, and again, not all pre-made stuff is bad, but you need to be smart about what you're buying. And I'll, I'll kind of, you know, make a joke here about it, and that is, in Arizona, when I'm teaching survival classes, I always tell people, look, if you, you know, a lot of people like to put like fishing lures and fishing line and stuff in their kit, and so I always tell people, look, if you're in Arizona and you're a place where it's easy to catch fish, then just sit down. Someone will be along shortly. <laughs> because any place in Arizona where it's good and easy to catch fish. There's nope. going to be people coming to catch more fish. There's probably going to be the game and fish there stocking that place with fish every few days. So just sit down and wait. Someone Take will be along shortly. You Filter know some I mean? water and relax. Take a nap. You'll be okay. I was looking at one um, at one kit and uh, it, it was made uh, by a company that is normally known to make pretty decent you know, knives and tools and stuff. It was actually Gerber. And, uh, and Gerber has this little pre-made uh, kit that is, it's total crap, man. You know, they have their tiniest little multi-tool in there and they're like, oh yeah, so now you have a multi-tool for survival. Like, have you ever used one of those tiny, tiny little multi-tools? I use them for opening mail. Yeah, they're junk, man. They're or junk. trimming my fingernails. That's about all they're good for. And then you've got, it's got like fishing line in there. It's got this really crappy nylon cord. It's got the world's smallest freaking flint and steel, which is terrible. I mean, again, better than nothing but not really that great. And considering that in that size of pouch that they give you, they could have put a full-size flint and steel. But again, if they put a full-size flint and steel, now their profit margin goes down and they're not that capable of making as much money. Um, there's all kinds of junk in this thing. I mean, a little compass, a little button compass doesn't really work that well. I mean, all kinds of just crap. And uh, so every time I see these kits, I, this is the thing that comes to my mind, and I, and I stole this from a friend of mine named Dan um, who actually builds bug out bags and stuff for, uh, for his living uh, with uh, Copper State Tactical. Oh, okay. Right. Dan yeah. from the yeah, 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 Survival yeah. Expos. Anyways, so uh, we were doing kind of a, a joint venture one time. He was giving a presentation on bug out bags and get home bags. I was doing a presentation on first aid kits for this big corporate group. And Dan said something uh, that I use to this day in training where he said, the problem with pre-made kits is that they're nothing. And so the, here's the deal. And this is the quote I stole from him. I would rather go into a situation knowing I have nothing, meaning nothing at all, then going into a situation thinking I have something, i.e. a pre-made kit, and then finding out when I went to use it that I had nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather start and go, oh, crap, I don't have really a whole lot. I got my pocket knife in my wallet or something like that, as opposed to going, oh, no big deal. I'll pull out this pre-made kit, and then you go to open it up, and everything's breaking in it, and nothing's working the way you wanted it to. And 
you know, most of the time, the people who are buying these pre-made kits don't really practice with them. If they did practice with them, they'd find out what an error they made, and they would, you know, ditch that thing and, and put their own kit together or look to a company that makes much, much better kits. Again, there are good companies out there that make really good stuff. Um, you know, a Rand Randall's Adventures um, and oh, training. Oh, yeah, all of the rat stuff is All fantastic. the rat stuff. Their knives are phenomenal. SC knives and rat gear and training, uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's all really, really good stuff. Those are guys who legitimately have been there, done that. So you want to be really careful about, you know, a lot of the commercialized stuff just because – that, that is part of the marketing hype. You know, they're selling us. And, and again, I, I poke fun at Bear Grylls a lot. I'm sure the guy is a really nice guy. Um, the problem is, is that what we call survivaltainment, right? Like, like mm -hmm. entertainment uh, or what, you know, people call certain types of training classes of entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same idea, you know what Stop I mean? Stop creating uh, words, by the way. <laughs> this is not for you. This is for the general public. Stop making up new words. You don't like entertainment? No. <laughs> Just it... <laughs> I think Stop I got making, that one from Larry Vickers, actually. Stop making up new words. So uh, Everyone. So the interesting thing about the, these ideas, these survival shows and these, these kind of new ideas is that, remember, this stuff is made for entertainment. It is not made. Don't watch a survival show and think you're getting solid training. Yeah, there may be some good ideas you can pull out of there, but that is typically bad advice. And most of what they're doing there is – just for entertainment. And it's the same thing with, you know, when you're buying these kits that are then based on these survival shows and they're going, oh, well, this is the XYZ brand name, you know, kit from the XYZ show. The problem is, is now you're buying something that's all marketed out. And so not only are you getting crappy components, you're buying this name of, of stuff. Yeah, you're buying a name. You're not buying components. You're buying a name. Yeah. I mean, it's like this one particular show <clears throat> with a one particular guy who's now has his own brand and knives and kits and everything. And listen to me when I say this, I have broken two of those knives, not making them work very hard. One of both of them belong to friends of mine. And they were like, let's see if this knife is a quality knife. The answer, no, it's not. You know, uh, I've looked in those kits, they're junk, they're crap. So be careful about the stuff that you buy when you're buying survival stuff, because it's this huge market. Now all the prepper stuff and emergency prepper or preparedness stuff and survivalists and the end of the world and Ebola and all this other shit that gets people all riled up and they run around buying all this stuff. That's crap, man. And, and to go back before we go on break, to go back to Dan's quote, I would rather have nothing than think I have something only to find out I have nothing. So uh, with that, we're going to go on break. When we come back, we're going to bust open all these kits. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about components. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of give my list based on, on my experience, which, uh, which I would say is, is pretty extensive um, on survival and outdoors and stuff like that. And, uh, and I'm going to kind of give my basic list of the stuff that you need. And then we're going to – John's going to bust open his kits. I'll bust open mine. We'll kind of spread things out on the table, and we'll show you kind of some of the ideas we have for the kind of things that you should be considering in your real survival kit. So we're going to go on break. You're listening to The Arms Room. You got the mirrors on, son. Have you ever wanted to be a truck driver? If so, pay attention. If not, pay attention anyway. Southwest Truck Driver Training offers everything you need to get started. You can get hired before you begin training. They've got GI Bill approved training facilities, day, night, or weekend programs to fit your busy schedule. And if you have any questions, no sweat. They've got veteran supportive campuses with veterans on staff to serve you. And on top of that, they have lifetime job placement assistance. Put the pedal to the metal. Call Southwest Truck Driver Training today. Everyone's going to need an attorney at some point in your life. I'm no different. Hey everyone, it's James from Vets On. Whether it was my last will and testament before deployment or my ongoing custody battle for my children during my divorce, I needed help, so I lawyered up. If you need help, I urge you to contact Capstrom Law Firm. Capstrom Law Firm in Springfield, Missouri services clients throughout the state in criminal law, personal injury, and family law. With over 13 years practicing law, Tom Capstrom understands both law and court procedures and how stressful they can be. Let Tom Capstrom Law Firm and his dedicated staff take the stress and worry out of a difficult situation by calling him today. We feel so strong about the work that Tom and his staff are doing that he'll be a monthly guest on the show. Tom is a veteran and a listener, for God's sake, so you know the guy is solid and will fight for you. Give Tom a call today by calling 417-864-0552 or email Tom at capstromlaw.com. 
And don't forget to tell them that Vets On sent you. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertising. If you or someone you know is looking for a new job or career, you need to visit the pros. National Career Fairs at ncfairs.com. National Career Fairs hosts over 300 career fairs a year nationwide. The events are free and give you the perfect chance to meet some of the top employers in your area face-to-face. -to, -face. to find the nearest career fair to you, visit ncfairs.com. Again, that's ncfairs.com. What are you waiting for? <laughs> oh, we're live. Oh, wow. We're All back. Right. Hey, we're back. No intro. Okay, we're back on the arms room. Fantastic. Cool. Mason, still learning. Doing doing okay. Doing all right. All right. Some people's kids, man. <laughs> kids these days. So let's talk about uh, kits. All right. Let's. So um, I'm pulling up something real quick. I got to pull it up. Hold on. All Stand. right. You, you Stand by. Pull. Stand by. Pull faster. Stand by. All right. Got it. Okay. Make your computer work faster. I can't. It's so old. <laughs> all right. So I have... Uh, I have a list of, of kind of kit essentials, and so I'm going to go over actually two lists. Uh -oh. uh, I'm going to give a, a list of kit essentials, stuff that you should absolutely positively in one way, shape, or form have in basically every kit. Um, and uh, if you're going to use it for outdoors or urban or whatever, these are the things you should definitely have in your kit. These are just essentials. You need to build from this list. Well, All let's right? see if I have these things while let's, you're going let's, over let's your list. Let's see if John actually has them. I know that in my kits, I brought three different kits. I bought a little tiny pocket kit I put in an Altoids tin. Uh, I brought a bottle kit, and then I brought my kit that I have in my uh, in my bug out bag. So we're going to talk about, uh, or my get home bag. I mean, so we've got this first list. All right, here's the here's primary essentials you should have. One, you should have at least two ways to make fire. All right, at least two ways. So you can't pull a lighter out of your pocket, man. I always I always have a lighter in my pocket. Well, if you quit smoking, you'd change that. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, so let's. See. I know, I know I'm right. Probably right. Listen to this guy. All right, you should have at least two ways to make fire. All right, good. So we got flint and steel and and a lighter and John's very good. All right, cool. And a tampon. Good no, job, it's cotton balls and I vaseline. know what it is. Jeez. All right, uh, you should also have some type of shelter material that's waterproof, all right, and preferably reflective, all right? So waterproof definitely has got to be some kind of shelter material. That could be a garbage bag. It could be a tarp. It could be any number of things that's going to be waterproof, all right, so that you can use it in any number of ways to build shelters. And also needs to be reflective, either reflecting the sun off of you or reflecting your own heat back onto you. Everybody, yeah, see, people take these things. And I love these, uh, the SOL heat mm -hmm. sheets. They're one of my favorite things and because uh, I use them for so many different deals. And people are like, oh, it's good because it's got reflective stuff in it. It reflects back your, your own body heat onto you. Spend a night wrapped up in one of these things when it's your only thing. I've done it too many times. And you know what? They're not that awesome. It's just enough to keep your ass alive under certain circumstances. So, you know, it's not like people, you know, they get these really cheap little Mylar blanks, 99 cent ones. They, mm, they suck. Mm. They're, they're terrible. They're three foot by five foot. Um, so they're not going to. Fisher Price, my first Yeah, they're not going to fit anybody comfortably. You're not going to be able to build a decently sized freaking shelter out of them. Um, Brad Pace, if you're listening, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about, brother. And, <laughs> and so, you know, they're, they're terrible, terrible little things. <laughs> These things are really nice because they're a little bit bigger. Um, they're a lot more durable. And they make an, another size larger, don't they? They do. And they make a yeah. couple other different ones. I've got one in my, in my get home bag. It's actually a no, a full size bivy and it's really good. We actually just got some in the store that, uh, it's like a complete shelter kit. Yeah. I've seen that. that. I've seen that. It's like the tarp and it's got the cord and the stakes yep. and everything. And that's instructions. A, that's that's really good. I, I'm them. a big fan of a lot of the SOL products. Uh, really, really good stuff. Um, so you want it to be waterproof. You want it to be reflective. And again, most people think, oh, it's just to reflect heat back onto you. It's also to flip that bad boy over. It's also for and re signaling. Reflect heat away from you or to signal. I mean, it's, it's, it's multi-purpose. Uh, so signaling, all right. You want some method of signaling and we're signaling. You want to, you want to use the kiss principle to keep it simple. All right. Keep it simple, stupid. So, or some people politically correct, keep it super simple because we can't hurt the new guy's feelings. So, you know, you I'm just saying, call I'm Mason saying your stupid. generation is what I Oh, think. okay. Don't let me in with all those people. I'm not. All right. So uh, signaling, you know, a mirror is fine. Um, I always recommend. So a lot of these mirrors, you have to be careful um, because like if you get a regular camp mirror, they're, they're kind of reflective. But it's interesting thing about some camp mirrors is they will actually say things like, you know, uh, they'll have like a matte coating on them to make them non-reflective. So as you're looking in the mirror, it doesn't blind you. And obviously for a signaling mirror, 
That's <laughs> not good, good or bad. I highly recommend getting an actual signaling mirror. Again, the SOLs, the star flashes, the, I think the military uses the star flashes. Yeah. They're all good. They're, they're great. Those are great mirrors. They're incredibly durable. They're small. They're compact. They've got a hole in the center of them. Um, the CDs actually make a great signaling thing. So a couple of years ago, um, I took out uh, my outdoor mastery class and we got about about three quarters of a mile. We kind of bounced back and forth between about three quarters of a mile and a mile away from each other. So we were on, um, uh, one of us was on one side of the hill and the other was on a way, way far, far hill. And we tried all these different signaling methods and colors and stuff like that. And, and here's the things that we found for signaling. Um, in order, the best colors in all environments, whether it's the shade, the desert, or the forest, are orange, mm -hmm. followed by pink, followed mm -hmm. by yellow. Mm -hmm. Right? Those are the best colors. Um, and, and yellow is iffy but pretty good um blue is pretty good as well actually um but but pink and orange hands down you know the brighter the better maybe that's why the vs 17 panel is that's why the vs 17 orange. is orange on one side and pink on the other right uh so for mirrors or for for reflective things people be like you can take apart your uh, your phone and you can use your watch and again this is all marketing bullshit all right. Mm. That sounds like a good idea, but it's not really that good. Yeah. If I'm 100, 200, 300 feet away from somebody, sure, that'll work pretty well. But as soon as we start getting real distances, you know, that stuff's not going to be really be that reflective. Right. So what works the best, obviously, is a mirror designed for signaling, not just any old mirror, but a yeah. mirror designed for signaling. One of the second best, easiest, cheapest things you can get is a CD. You've all got a bunch of, you know, like Spice Girl CDs hanging around or something. You got no purpose for them anymore. I still listen to my Spice Girl CDs. <laughs> Pull it out. Stick it in your kit. Uh, it's got a hole in the center already for targeting. You know, uh, it's, it's really, really reflective. CDs are actually really, really good. You know, any, again, any reflective anything works. But, I mean, people are like, oh, you can use your knife blade. Not listen, Rambo. <laughs> In the, if that's all you had, then that's what I would try. <laughs> oh, crap. Nope. Mine's blackened. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like in the real world, if it's all you had, then it's then it's all you had. But in the in the you know, if you had the or right equipment, the right kind of stuff, you don't have to worry about trying to improvise. I'm going to use my watch. Or I'm going to break my phone apart. And like, don't do that crap. Just get the right equipment to start with. Uh, water purification. I want something that's easy to use and something that's that. not going to break. You do have water purification though. Um, if yes, you, I do. If you have any kind of metal container, like a cup or anything, like I was carrying a metal cup in my bag. Right. If you have even just a metal cup, you got a way to make fire, boom, you have one of the most fail-proof yeah. ways to, you know, you can strain it and then boil it, and boom, you got a water purification method. Obviously, there's downsides to boiling. We won't get into that because we're going to talk about straight-up water purification only today. But, right. um, you know, there's downsides to boiling, but obviously, it's it's a very easy, foolproof method to do it. I want something that's easy to use and something that's not going to break. I'm not going to carry around some pump filter. Uh, trust me when I say that I have broken a lot of pump filters after multiple days out backpacking and doing that. They've failed me more often than not. The simpler the filter, the better off you are. That's why I like things like the Life Straw. I'm a big fan of the Life Straw. I have one of those, um, but not Yeah, I've here. got one here in my kit. Yeah. Um, Fire, obviously, is a good way to do it. Uh, the Sawyer Mini Filters, I'm, I'm kind of playing with those right now. I, mm. They have upsides and downsides. They're not as easy to use, straightforward to use as the Life Straw, but they do – have a couple of advantages over it. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, take that for what it's worth. There, there's some really simple, easy to use filters out there. You know, I like the life straw because it's really straightforward. It's freaking yeah. straw. You put straw in the put water. In water, drink. Drink, right? <clears throat> no, they're not fail proof. No, they're not perfect. But for the most part, there's no moving parts. There's nothing that's going to break. As long as you treat it appropriately, you don't put in a bunch of nasty water, it's going to clog it up. You know, you move that stuff or you, you know, take, scoop the water out, strain it first, whatever you're going to be better off. And really, regardless of what kind of water you're boiling, filtering, or anything else, you should always strain your water first to remove large particles to avoid blocking up any kind of filter or drinking it after you boil or anything like that. You should always strain your water before you filter it. So water purification is a, is a need. Some type of light should be either battery-free or you should definitely have extra batteries. So chem lights, chem lights are a good choice. Um, there's a lot of cool replacements for chem lights these days. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there's a lot of cool replacements for chem lights. There's a lot of cool things like the ones from Bright Strike, those little button lights that I, mm -hmm. like I've got the one in my kit, tiny little button light you can turn on. Um, the uh, the Inovas are great, man. Those things last for 150 something stupid hours. So there's a lot of cool replacements for them. Um, what's that one company? Uh, Packlight, P A Q L I T E. Packlight makes some really cool rechargeable lights um, that are very awesome. I, I've been using the solar powered lights lately. Uh, I really like the uh, the Nocaros and the Illuminades. Very, very cool. Illuminates the size of maybe like two credit cards. 
and it blows up. So it inflates oh, into a the, light. Yeah, yeah, solar yeah, yeah, power, yeah. seven hours of sunlight gives you 16 hours of light, bright enough to light an entire room. So, I mean, literally on high, the light one, one of the entire rooms in my house. So very, very cool product. They're like 20 bucks, easily goes in a kit. So that's something to consider. Um, if you're gonna light, carry, that's a pretty good light as well. The Streamlight micro lights. Yeah, all the Streamlight micro lights one are One AAA great. battery to last you days. I mean, I've used mine for a long time and I just now had to change the batteries. Same thing with headlamps. You know, headlamps are just about any any type. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Petzl headlamps. I cannot say enough good things. About well, that one's a that Princeton headlamps. Tech. I've got, I've got the, the Petzl. The P-Techs are pretty good. I've got the Petzl Tactique. I've got two of those and I've had those for, they've been blown yeah. up. They've been thrown around. They've been hauled around the world. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the best thing I can say about a Petzl Tactique headlamp is there's one attached to my get-on bag. Yeah. And in my day pack, there's the Tactica XP, you know, and in my, on my TAC gear, there's the Tactica Strikes. I mean, I, I, or the uh, Petzl Strikes. I mean, I can't say enough good things about Petzl headlamps. Absolutely love Petzl headlamps. Love the Tactica lines. Uh, they're durable. They're incredibly easy to use. I love red filters that just flip up and down. No, I, button, I hate click, button, click, 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 click. Oh, I need to go to red light. Let me click through all my white lights first. That is gay. All right. That's if I need a red light, it's, dumb. it's because I don't want to lose my night vision. So I don't want to click through all the bright white lights first, you know, so it's nice just to be able to flip the filter up and down. Um, the Tactica XP, one of the, one of the ones I have slides back and forth. Yeah. You know, I really like it's the only thing I don't love about the, the strikes is that you have to go through, you know, different right. modes and everything. But it is a good light. So uh, but I love love Petzl headlamps. Carry extra batteries, though. If you're going to have a headlamp, you're going to have a flashlight. John's got so John's got a couple chem lights. Obviously, he has fire for light. Um, he's got you know a full size uh, flashlight. He's got a, a headlamp. Those are all great. All right, uh, and he's got an extra set of batteries. And these are the uh, the Condor battery cases. I don't know if that one's Condor, but Condor this does might, make might them. be the mil spec one. But yeah. but Condor sells them. They're like four or five bucks. Yeah, they're like five bucks. Yeah, and they'll hold a couple of one two threes. Um, they'll hold four one two threes. Four one two threes. Four double A's. Four double A's. Or six triple A's. Yeah, or right. any combination, and they come apart and go together. That's right. So there's two sections. There's of these. two sections of they're, them, and they're actually designed. One's kind of like this brown color, and the other one's like a gray color. Yeah. They were designed for rechargeable batteries, so mm -hmm. that you could say like whatever gray is my live battery and brown is my dead batteries, so you could rotate you know know what batteries you're rotating through yeah. um, but they work perfectly for sliding off and boom i've got carry the same type of thing in my bag and they're also Very good cool. for wrapping um, duct tape and electrical tape around yeah multi-use stuff um cord some kind of cord paracord man uh, this is you a know, paracord i love paracord i do too it's so multifunctional this is a little What's bit that? smaller um it's like a utility like i've got it just for tying stuff together or using as a shoelace or whatever. I don't. I don't have it in there for extreme heavy use. I'm not going to repel off of it. Well, I'll tell you why I like paracord, and it doesn't have anything to do with the 550 pound test. It has everything to do with the inner strands. Yeah, it has everything to do with the inner strands. And people talk about stupid stuff again, like you can use the inner strands to fish with. No, I mean, yeah, I guess you could give it a shot, but you know what I've used the inner strands for is tying stuff together. Because if I have 20 foot of cord with seven inner strands, then that means I got 160 foot of cord. You know what I mean? <coughs> so I, it doesn't take a lot. You with me there, dude? Um, uh, no, I got you. Okay. <clears throat> so the idea is, is that the inner cord is very, very valuable and it's 50 pound test. I've tied down shelters with the inner cord. Mm -hmm. Um, just the other day, I used the inner cord to tie an arrowhead onto an arrow. Long story, but I tied, nice. I tied an arrowhead onto an arrow with the inner strand because it was perfect size for doing it. So really cool to use paracord for that purpose. Yes, it's nice. It's very durable, 550-pound test or whatever. Um, remember, this is not dynamically rated, so if you are going to use it to repel or something like that, you better not be bounding or falling yep. or doing anything like that. You're going to find gonna yourself <laughs> in, at the bottom of a rope real fast. So um, you know, make sure that that you've, uh, you know, you've got some kind of cord, some kind of first aid in your primary first aid or uh, survival kit should be just sure. the essentials, right? Just the essentials. You need to be able to stop bleeding, start breathing. So a basic tourniquet with a, uh, with some kind of basic bandage and, you know, and it doesn't have to be a lot because you can shove that into a relatively small kit. Um, even if all you had for a turn, if you, if you shoved like a cravat and a, you know, tiny four inch wound stop bandage or something, Hey man, that's something. You know, that would be something. Uh, here's a good, you know, here's one of the things that we carry. I carry this in my pocket. You guys have seen it on the show before. It's John's uh, from Redwire Red Gear, his little uh, pocket trauma kit. Pocket trauma kit. All right. So, Mark 81. So, these are great kits. Yeah. You know, um, 
if you wanted to get even smaller than that, because you're trying to shove it into a smaller survival kit, then just the essentials. Yep. All right. Uh, blades, some kind of cutting utensil. Now, it can be something nice and small like this. So this is John Strider, which is a great knife. Striders are really, really great. Um, a little bit bigger than typically what I do. And everyone's kind of got their own opinion about survival blades. That's the smallest fixed blade knife I've got. And I've... I've seen this thing driven in, uh, not this one, but I've seen these driven into trees and stood on. See, so. and everyone's kind of got their own opinion. Some people want like this really, really heavy duty knife because they want to use it as an ax or whatever. I'm a huge fan of the Mora's. Uh, and I have is, I have several of those as well. This is the Mora Triflex. It's it's their biggest blade, I believe. Um, they, actually, no. Let me take that back. They do have a larger one. This is their biggest survival blade, I think. I love these. I have used these to skin. There you go. The blade, your, your strider is much thicker, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's nice, though, what I'm looking for in a survival knife. So let me just tell you the difference between what I'm looking for. I like small, lightweight blades. Um, and what I can, I've can i chopped wood with this. I've cut down saplings with this. I've skinned animals with this. This knife. I mean, this is a really, really good piece of equipment. So um, instead of people who buy survival blades often are like, I got the best survival knife ever, and it sits in my kit, and I've never used it. Like, I can tell you that these, especially the more Triflex knives, which I have several of, um, take a licking and keep on taking. I beat the heck out of these things. So they're very, very cool knives. Um, what I'm looking for in a survival knife is pretty simple. I don't want any kind of crazy wicked blade angle or anything like that. I just want a regular drop point blade, mm -hmm. right? So a regular drop point blades, easy to slice with, easy to cut with. I want steel that's really easy to sharpen and that stays wicked sharp. All right. I don't want to have to sit here and mess with this thing too much. I want a big spine on the back of the blade so that I can baton it or grab a piece of wood or another object or whatever and drive it through things. Drive it through wood, drive it through bone, um, drive it through whatever I'm trying to chop or cut, all right? I also want a blade that is full tang, so I want it to go all the way down to the end of the handle. I don't want it to stop at uh, kind of the hand guard here, so to speak. No knife blade grip. riveted to handle. Yes, there you go. So I want the, a full piece of steel basically with a grip wrapped around it yep. is what I want. Um, and other than that, I mean, that's, you know, you're, you're, Situation may vary after that. All right. It's totally up to you. Um, but that's kind of what I'm looking for. And that's why I like the Moras because this is their most expensive knife and it's like 50 bucks. Oh my God. You know what I mean? So I, I love Moras because I've beat the heck out of them. I've never broken one. I've never had anyone fail me. I've skinned animals with them. I've split sternums with them, you know, animal sternums, big deer and stuff like that. Um, I've chopped down little saplings. I've built shelters. I've done all kinds of awesome stuff with these knives and never had a problem. And then taking it and made, you know, after doing that kind of nasty stuff with it, then take it and made nice, easy cuts on meat or whatever because the, the blades are so incredibly, uh, such good steel, good Swedish steel. So it's good stuff. All right. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Two ways to make fire, waterproof and reflective shelter materials, uh, simple signaling, water purification is not going to break um, and easy to use and simple to use. Light that's either battery free or I definitely am going to carry some extra batteries or both is even better. Uh, and swap your run batteries out, out administratively about every six months, depending on your environment. It's worth a couple bucks in batteries. Especially at the change of your seasons from your winter to your summer, make sure you change them. And then that way it's an easy way to remember it. So yep. daylight savings times if you live in a state that has that. So. No, that's absolutely good. Uh, cord. I like something with inner strands. Just the essentials of first aid and no freaking Rambo blade. Just get a knife that's actually going to be functional and work. So, so that's kind of what we're looking at for kit essentials. Um, other things, real quick, if I can get through this deal here real quick. Oh, let me go back a second. All right, we're going to take a break, actually. And then when we come back, we're going to bust open these kits. In fact, during the break, we're going to, I'm going to kind of open up some of these kits, and we're going to talk about uh, some other additional things that we can put into kits when we're looking at whether we want tiny little pocket kits like this little guy in an Altoids tin or a bottle kit, something I can throw in a vehicle that's you know kind of nonchalant, easy to, easy to use, or we're actually going to build something bigger with a, with a full-size kit in it. So uh, when we come back, bigger kits and contents, you've been listening to The Arms Room. Everyone's going to need an attorney at some point in their life. I'm no different. Hey, everyone, it's James from Vets On. Whether it was my last will and testament before deployment or my ongoing custody battle for my children during my divorce, I needed help, so I lawyered up. If you need help, I urge you to contact Capstrom Law Firm. Capstrom Law Firm in Springfield, Missouri, services clients throughout the state in criminal law, personal injury, and family law. With over 13 years practicing law, Tom Capstrom understands both law and court procedures and how stressful they can be. 
Let Tom Capstrom Law Firm and his dedicated staff take the stress and worry out of a difficult situation by calling him today. We feel so strong about the work that Tom and his staff are doing that he'll be a monthly guest on the show. Tom is a veteran and a listener, for God's sake, so you know the guy is solid and will fight for you. Give Tom a call today by calling 417-864-0552 or email Tom at capstromlaw.com. And don't forget to tell him that Vets on sent you. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertising. Breaker, breaker, one nine. How about that bandit? You got the mirrors on, son. Have you ever wanted to be a truck driver? If so, pay attention. If not, pay attention anyway. Southwest Truck Driver Training offers everything you need to get started. You can get hired before you begin training. They've got GI Bill approved training facilities, day, night, or weekend programs to fit your busy schedule. And if you have any questions, no sweat. They've got veteran supportive campuses with veterans on staff to serve you. And on top of that, they have lifetime job placement assistance. Put the pedal to the metal. Call Southwest Truck Driver Training today. Do you need an extra push to start your day? Well, then tune in to Addie's Radio. Addie's Radio is a show that explores tough questions in an open and fun forum. The program also engages hard-hitting issues concerning veterans' physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. This show airs every Tuesday from 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Vets on Media Network. Addie's Radio is hosted by Jesse James, a combat veteran of Afghanistan, so he knows the problems that veterans face every day. Jesse provides you guidance each and every week to be a better you. So tune into yourself each week by tuning into Addie's Radio. Go to VetsOnMedia.com for show details. If you or someone you know is looking for a new job or career, you need to visit the pros. National Career Fairs at NCFairs.com. National Career Fairs hosts over 300 career fairs a year nationwide. The events are free and give you the perfect chance to meet some of the top employers in your area face-to-face. -to, -face. to find the nearest career fair to you, visit ncfairs.com. Again, that's ncfairs.com. What are you waiting for? You're listening to The Arms Room on the Vets on Media Network. All right, you're back on the arms room. Woo! Uh, didn't pull out the stuff during the breaks. So I wanted to pull it out individually so everyone could kind of. We didn't end up with a big old pile of shit. And no one knew what's happening. We're gonna, <laughs> what's all that crap on the table, what's guys? All that crap? So to start real basically, like with a pocket kit. So John went through his kit and basically had all the essentials, which is good. Mm. Um, in a uh, in a pocket kit, something like this, just a little Altoids tin. So it's held together by a couple of. Don't say it. Inner tubes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> called Ranger Band. Oh! There you go. Tell them what it is. All right. Oh, so uh, inner, cut up inner tube. Just cut up bike inner tube is really great. It's good for holding stuff together. Um, I've held tent poles together with this. I've held stakes into the ground with this. I've done a lot of cool stuff. Also, lights on fire and is awesome uh, for putting, uh, you know, if you have a lighter, boomy, or even get a fire started and you're having a hard time keeping it going, you get this lit. It's rubber, so it's going to burn pretty well. It's good uh, for, for the a environment long time. Too. Really good for the environment, but it'll burn really well. And then what's cool is once it, you know, once you've got the fire started, if you haven't consumed the whole thing, you can pull it out. You can put the fire out on it, and you can use it again. Um, in fact, I've even used ones that I've lit on fire, started a fire with, and then still used them as a rubber band because it didn't burn all the way through. So these things are great for holding stuff shut, like this little tin. So inside this tin, I have right on top an unlubricated condom. What in the hell would I use an unlubricated condom for in survival? Oftentimes, I, know, I pull this I thing know. out. People are like, oh, was that for like shit hits the fan sex? No, it's not. And an unlubricated condom is not nice for that, so don't do that. Because <laughs> in, in that situation, I'm not really concerned with condoms if the world's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> yeah. That's my first thing. <laughs> so what they're good for, all right, is, uh, and especially when you're dealing with like a pocket kit, Let's say this is all I have. This is the kind of thing I was going to carry and whatever, all right, is uh, I can take this, open it up. I can put this inside of this, and now this kit is completely waterproof, mm. right? So that's an advantage. Um, another big advantage of these, I can carry water in them. Um, if I'm having a hard time getting a fire started, you know, it's latex. It's going to burn really well, so I can put my tinder inside, you know, get it going. It'll help start the fire. Um, you can make a slingshot out of these bad boys, which is pretty freaking awesome. So, you know, there's, there's a couple of things that you can do with these that's really useful. The primary reason I use it in my pocket kit is because 
I can waterproof it very quickly. Right. And so it makes it really nice. Um, yeah, sure. There's better, easier bags to put it in, but there's nothing that folds up that tiny. Right. It's true. So true that's story. a very small way to, to make something, you know, waterproof. Right. So Plus I've been told that the inside of the wrapping is reflective. So <laughs> there you go. Another signal mirror. <laughs> we just end the show. <laughs> Yeah, I have yeah. things to say that I can't say on the air. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll come back to we'll that back to off that. air. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so inside, and he actually, on another stupid note, people say like, well, inside an Altoids tin is reflective, so you can, you know, reflect it on people. Like, yeah, you could, but it's not a very good surface. So, again, better to have you something that's actually You need a new Altoids reflective. tin, homie. No, well, this is fine. Your... No, I could put that back on. But, again, that's what these things are. Oh, about. okay. So, in here, I've got my light. Uh, I've got my water purification. I've got a razor, so my blade wrapped up in duct tape, um, so you know it's safe. But with a, with there's actually two razor blades in here, full size like utility blades. You'd mm -hmm. be surprised how long you can keep those things working, as long as you don't do start hitting rocks with them and stuff like that. You can keep a razor blade going, and it's easy to make a razor blade knife. You know, get get yourself a good solid stick, split it, put a little, you know, slide the razor blade down in it, bind it up with you know some paracord. <clears throat> or tape or something like that. You got yourself a small little cutting utensil. So very cool thing. Um, I've got myself some wet tinder in there, wet fire stuff. I've got marking tape in here, um, just mostly as, as a signaling method. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a P38 just because I could shove it in there. <laughs> There's enough space to put a P38 in. And P38s are useful for a lot of very cool uh, little things. So if you don't know what a P38 is, Google is your friend, and you definitely need to go hit that. All right. Um, I keep a hacksaw blade in here, not just for cutting, also for striking my relatively small flint. You know, this is not my favorite size of flint, but it is better than nothing, and it does fit in this kit. Uh, it gives me the capability to actually get something going. Razor blades are, or excuse me, um, saw blades are much, much better for striking flint with than like the backside of a knife or anything like that. Um, they have that jagged edge, which makes more sparks. Plus, it's good for cutting. Again, I can build a little saw to this. And I keep in here my part of a CD, which again is, is incredibly reflective. It's amazing how reflective these things are. So that that is a pocket kit. I mean, I basically put almost all the essentials in there. Uh, water purification, I have myself a metal container and I can start a fire. It's not ideal. Can't purify a lot of water at a time, but I can do it. You know, so here's the essentials that we need. Got some water purification, electrolyte tabs in there. So that, that helps, you know, along with the process. So again, not ideal, but better. Now this thing, I'm not going to pull all the contents out of here because we don't have enough time to put them all back in, but this is a bottle. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you everything that's in here because I do have it down in a list here. Give me a second, pull it up. But the reason that bottle kits are pretty cool. And I've seen, again, I got this idea um, from pre-made kits that were crap. You know, they like sell these little lifeline bottles and they have a whole bunch of junk in there, just crap components. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna make my own bottle survival kit. So here's my bottle survival kit um, that, that if you put together yourself, wouldn't cost much. You can see it's just a regular, uh, you know, 32 ounce Nalgene bottle. So obviously I've got a way to, to carry water. I've got my Grimlock here in case I need to attach it the bottle to myself or anything else and I got it wrapped up with a lot of duct tape so already you know I've got a pretty good amount of supply and they just make on the outside um, of the model. wide mouth metal bottles now too they do yeah now I, I still like um, you know people think oh I have a plastic bottle I can't boil water in it yeah you can you, you can, can actually boil yeah. water in one of these plastic bottles so um, I've done it it's, it's very very possible a couple different methods but if you're gonna you know the idea behind something like this is this is something I can put my survival stuff in I can toss it in a car I can toss in the back seat. I can toss in my trunk or something. It's not as big as a bag. Maybe if you're worried about raising eyebrows or people asking you questions or something like that, boom, here's the thing that you can carry around with you. No one's going to raise, you're not going to raise any eyebrows. So in here, I have a large garbage bag, a 55 gallon heavy duty, you know, com, uh, contractor's bag. I've got one of those heat sheets that John showed earlier. Uh, I've got uh, three different types of granola bars in here. I have my lighter, uh, big lighter with ranger bands around it. All right. Um, I've got fat wood, which is a, a type of, of fire starter or tinder. I have some wet fire in here. 
more tender. I've got my flint and steel in here, two ways to make fire. Uh, I have drink mix, uh, both for water purification tablets in here, as well as actual drink mix. Uh, for people who've ever purified water and had to drink it sometimes from a nasty source, like anywhere in Arizona, um, <laughs> typically not going to be really clear and it's tastes like dirt a lot of the time. And so it's nice if you're not filtering it through like an actual filter. So it's nice to have some drink mix that at least it tastes like strawberry and dirt, which I'm fine with. Uh, got some good duct tape, got my Grimlock, whatever in here. I've also got a full size compass. I've got um, a big old pack of gauze in there. I have a full signal mirror in here. I've got a folding blade in here. I've got two chem lights in here. I have a small Inova button light and I've got uh, an, another unlubricated condom in here. So everything in this tiny little bottle, tons of stuff that I can put in here. And it wasn't hard to get in there. It's not like I had to play super magician to get all that stuff in there. It all fit, fit in there pretty easily, but that is a ton of stuff that I can put in this in this water bottle. So like, there's no excuse <laughs> that you shouldn't be carrying some kind of kit with you. The very least this right here in your, in your vehicle or in your backpack or whatever is going to be a whole lot better than almost any pre-made kit that you're going to buy. This gives me all the essentials, everything I'm going to need right here in a 32 ounce bottle. And of course, when it all comes down to it, at the very least I have a bottle. Mm -hmm. right? So there's an idea for you. All right. Um, this is my kit that I carry around in my get home bag. So in my, in this little kit, nice little nylon kit kind of keeps everything well organized. Um, this is in addition to my get home bag. So in my get home bag, I've got my shelter materials. I've got my water purification. I've got my, uh, my blade in here. I've got my first aid kit in here. I've got food in here. So I've got all other kinds of tools and items and stuff. This is just kind of a dedicated survival kit. So in here, um, I've got some chapstick, man. So I'm like one of the few dudes I know anymore who still carries chapstick around as like an everyday carry item. I always carry it around in my pocket. Um, I live in Arizona. I can't tell you how many times my lips get chapped just from being outside so much. It sucks. Mm -hmm. It's just like one of the most uncomfortable things. Every time we do a long training weekend yeah. and I forget my chapstick, I'm sad for like a week afterwards. Oh. Dude, it sucks, you know? So I keep some chapstick in here. Um, so, so now I'm going to remember that. And next time I forget, I'm like, hey, man, I need your chapstick. <laughs> like, I don't have any. Yes, you do. I know you do. <laughs> I don't have any that you can put on your face. I will, I will get you my extra one. Um, I actually always carry an extra one in my truck, too. Yeah, I know. FYI. But uh, yeah. there's other cool things you can do with, with uh, chapstick as well. But I've got my fire kit in here. I have one of my most favorite lights ever oh, in here. Oh, the Streamlight um, Sidewinder. Streamlight Sidewinder. It's one of my most favorite lights ever. I love this thing. I've used it a lot. Um, very, very cool. It's Molly compatible. If you need that, it's got a full 180 degree swiveling head it uses double a batteries. So it's easy to carry around that. Nothing super exotic. Um, it's got four different lenses. So red, blue, green, and regular white light. You can strobe it. The battery life on this thing is insanely long. Um, it's, it's really waterproof. It's a really great light. So I like that. Yeah. It's kind of a big light. I know that. Well, they have a new like version it. of that. They have a compact just the version. head. Mm-hmm that you can also mount on a headband. Yes, that's true. Um, the only reason I don't like it, it just doesn't last as long. Right. Yeah. But yes, if you were yeah. looking for a more compact light, that's a good one. Um, I've got my compass in here. I've got a, a really uh, loud whistle. That's what else I have in here was a whistle that for some reason is not on my list here, but um, I also have a, a whistle in here. If you're going to put a whistle in there, make sure it's P-less. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a little P that rattles around in there. Um, I like the screamer whistles or the SOL whatever the heck they call their whistles are really great. The Fox whistles are also really awesome. I think that's what's in here is a Fox whistle. I've got my paracord chem lights. Um, I've got an orange poncho in here. Um, pencil and paper. Always good to be able to leave notes. Uh, oh, also in here, I keep like some sunscreen wipes and some bug wipes. Mm. So that way I've got just wipes that are good for putting, applying some sunscreen, applying some, uh, some anti bug stuff, you know, bug repellent, whatever it's called. And, uh, so a lot of cool stuff that you can put into a kit. This is the little bright strike thing I was talking about. I picked these up at shot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. So super adhesive, double-sided tape, sticky stuff on the back. And, uh, you can turn it on once it's super bright flashing red. You can turn it on once it's slow flashing red. Click it again. It's just a straight light or turn it off. And these things run for, I can't remember, days mm -hmm. on, a, on a battery. So if I need to signal to somebody, I mean, it's not the kind of thing I'm going to use to light my way. But <laughs> if I need, if I was going to go, you know, if I really was lost or, or need to find my way back to something and it might be dark, I might put that on there. If I'm going to sleep and I'm, people are looking for me, I might put this up somewhere mm -hmm. where they can see it's really bright in the dark, uh, very lightweight. And they're only a few bucks. So 
So there's just kind of some ideas about stuff that you can look at putting in kits, realistic kits, kind of thinking about building your own, or if you want to buy one, the kind of stuff that you should be looking for in them. You know, most of this stuff is stuff that suits my experience and stuff that suits my needs based on primarily being in the Southwest, you know, mm -hmm. um, Utah, Nevada, California, Arizona, you know, Colorado. That's where I spend most of my time. Yeah, I go up north a little bit, you know, but mostly down here in the Southwest. This stuff suits my needs, whether it's a full-size get-home bag or my little bottle kit or a pocket kit. This is kind of stuff that suits my needs and it also suits my experience. And that's a crucial thing about a, a good survival kit. You know, we pulled out a lot of different stuff. We've talked about a lot of different things. We don't have enough time to go into the details of each individual piece. So if you have any questions, you can always, you know, hit us up on the Facebook page or whatever. Um, but pick something that suits your experience. And if you don't have experience with an item, like if you don't, if you can't start a fire with a flint and steel, then you need to freaking practice. You know, yeah, my, my favorite ones. Steel. My favorite ones are the uh, well, light my the fires. light my fires, right? So yeah, I actually had a fire at my house the other night, and I big boy busted here. out my uh, my flint and my steel because it'd been a while, and it took me a few minutes because I'm like, uh, <laughs> but I oh, I got hell? I got it going. I'm like, how does this thing work? So all this stuff is great, but it's really important to know how to use all this equipment. If you have a kit and you don't know how to use it, then it's not going to do you really. Anything. If you have a kit that you've never opened fail take take 10 minutes out of your day just 10 minutes that's all it takes sit down open your kit look at the stuff that's in it give the stuff a google you know there's youtube is, tons of videos out there yeah there's tons to of videos stuff. on youtube and all these other any any now that in mind not all of them are you're, good take everything for based on your experience and for but what there's it's some worth. good sources but there's there. some good information mm -hmm. out there you know and then you know go take a class from somebody there, there's always little survival classes mm -hmm. being taught at your local again, check, hiking and camping just make sure stores. again that you're checking someone's experience right, because right. if all someone is doing and i see this in a lot of survival regurgitating classes, if they're just regurgitating all the you know right. they they built their class based on their youtube knowledge right then that's probably not the person you want to take class from right but, but if you are going to take a class from somebody make sure you actually research them a little bit do they know what they're doing do they actually go outside do they actually use their stuff you know um do they actually, you know, or do they only go out when it's perfect? Like, oh, yeah, I go out and use this stuff all the time when it's 70 right. degrees or yeah. something like Have they gone out and used it in the winter? Have they gone out and used it in the spring? Have yeah. they actually ever survived? They don't have to be like a, a seer specialist or a, you know, hardcore primitive living person or anything. I mean, that stuff's nice, but make sure that they actually have some experience and some real world knowledge on how to use their stuff. On the other side of things, also make sure you take your kid with you. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to go for a walk in the woods, there's no reason – at the very minimum, you can't take this. This is what I put in my day pack when I go like mountain biking. I just toss this in my little day pack with my with my hydration bladder in it. I can take this thing out and slip it in a pocket, slip it in a cargo pocket, toss it in your little purse or bag or whatever you got. Don't walk away from camp. Don't walk away from your vehicle without your stuff. You can have the most badass kit in the world in, in your, your truck. And if you're 200 yards from your truck, that might be 100 yards too far, right? So don't, uh, don't, have awesome equipment and then never have it on you or never keep it with you. It amazes me how many hunters and outdoorsmen and people I know that, that should know better who go out hunting. They don't have a first aid kit. They don't have a survival kit. They're just like, oh, well, it's fine. Nothing's ever happened to me before. I'm fine. I'm experienced, whatever. Like, look, let me just make this admission on air. All right. When it comes to being in the outdoors, I'm pretty damn good. All right. I've spent a lot of time in the outdoors and I mean a lot of time. I've been in blizzards. I've been in rainstorms. I've slept through every nasty condition you can possibly imagine. And I have been lost. No joke lost. All right. I have had to bust into my kit before. Not because I failed or anything like that, but because I let overconfidence get, get mm -hmm. a hold of me or because I, I stayed out too long. It got darker faster than I thought it was going to. It was a storm hit faster than I thought it was going to. I'm not perfect. And anybody out there who, who teaches survival and says, oh, I've never been lost, they're either full of crap or they're probably not the person you want to be learning from. All right. Uh, remember where experience comes from, right? Experience. And when people talk about being experienced, experience means that I've done stupid stuff and I'm still here to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what experience is. So go out there and use your stuff. Get out there and don't be afraid, you know, to, to take your kit with you. Don't don't worry about what someone's going to say. Oh, you carrying a little survival kit with you? Yeah, I am because I don't want to die. You know what I mean? Oh, you carry a little medical kit with you? Yeah, I am because I don't want to die. And if you don't carry it, hey, oh, man, look, you, that's you, on you. You fell down and you need some some medical supplies. Oh, it's, it's too bad you made fun of my kit, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here, here, I, I guess a, I'll just watch you crawl back here, to the truck. Have a, a Band-Aid. 
Have a Band-Aid, friend. So carry your kit with you. Know how to use your kit. All yeah. right. That's it's crucially important. All right, so uh, we're out of time. I wish we could we could spend all day talking about uh, survival kits. I really enjoy that because I love survival. I love the outdoors. Let's talk about what we're going to be doing next week. All right, next week we've got a guest. Ooh, who do we have next? It's week? Brian. Oh yeah. So Brian Sinclair is going to be in the studio with us. Uh, he is one of Independence <coughs> Training's instructors. He teaches the combative stuff. And mm -hmm. so what we're going to be talking about is why you need to learn how to fight without a gun. What? Because the gun is not always the answer. In fact, most of the time. It's the not gun the answer. is not the answer. It's not. All right. Um, as, as, as we've seen too many times, right? Why do you need to learn how to fight without a gun? And realistically, you know, we're not talking about black belt and Taekwondo kind of crap. We're talking about no joke, real fighting. All right. Um, we're, we're talking about actual combatives, you know, really disabling. You're talking somebody. about wrecking somebody in a matter of seconds. You're about, as John likes to say, crushing someone's soul. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're going to have Brian uh, in the studio next week. He's very, very, very experienced in the world of combatives. And, uh, and he's going to be talking to us about why you need to learn to fight without a gun. So as always, if you have questions, you can always get on our Facebook page and hit us up and see, uh, you know, ask us questions, check out the pictures we're going to be posting this week of our new shirts Contact yeah. us if you want to uh, order one of our new awesome shirts. And um, what's that, Adam? Okay. All right. Um, also, one other quick note. Uh, we are currently, the arms room, looking for more advertisers. Yeah. So if you're interested, if you're a company that wants to reach a very captive audience mm -hmm. of you know law enforcement and military and shooters and things like that, um, Contact us about that. We are actively looking for more advertisers. Uh, we want to demonstrate your product in the studio. We want to have you as a guest on the show. We're always looking for more of that. Um, it's a great advertising opportunity. Uh, we are really expanding our reach and have been since we started this show. So we are climbing drastically and quickly. It would be a great opportunity for you to send us an email and ask us more information. You can hit us up at info at independence training dot com and uh, we'll get back to you about all of our advertising opportunities so until next week stay aware stay safe and train hard you've been listening to the arms room We're so gallant,